Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's tuning in through our online affiliates around the world, including our friends at Our Heart Radio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. I have a very special guest that's making her very first appearance on Conversations Live today. She's someone who's internationally known for her music, her voice, and also, I think, her inspiring journey as well. We're so excited to welcome Ms. Jennifer Holliday to our program today. We're going to talk to her about not only already the year that's been 2022 for her, she's had a lot going on, a brand new single, our radio audience here in Mississippi heard it not too long ago, So In Love. Also, you guys got to see her as Miss Teddy on The Mass Singer uh, this year as well. A lot going on with her, including some performances you all will be able to check out. And because it's such a special guest, I had to bring in a special co-host. I have a co-host today, my very first one of 2022. You guys know her as international recording artist here, Marie. She's joining us today. Sherry, first of all, thank you so much for being a part of this special program today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Cyrus, for having me. I'm so honored. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> Look, I, I appreciate that. I believe that, too. We're going to go ahead and bring in our special guest, Ms. Holiday. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. Hello, Cyrus. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, Ms. Holliday, I want to begin by talking about this year, because you have had such an amazing career overall, but this year, you have you have not stopped. I mean, you have had so much going on. The new single we mentioned, So In Love, that we were playing here on the radio side of our broadcast, and then, as I said, you were revealed as Miss Teddy on The Masked Singer. What has this year been like for you to already reflect on what you've been able to do? It has been so exciting, and I don't want to get, like, spiritual and deep on you, but, you know, the pandemic threw those of us, uh, well, the whole world, you know, into a just kind of like a, a spinning cycle. But for many of us in the entertainment uh, industry who perform live, we had nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? We had nothing to do, those of us who do music, and, you know, everything just stopped. And so uh, it really wasn't until last year that things started going. Then there was another round of the virus, and so everything got postponed again. People, you know, postponed our concerts or rescheduled them or pushed them all the way off to 2023 because of Omicron. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, when am, what's going to happen, you know? And then sometimes you just have to take a deep breath, and you have to realize that life is what it is. It's each day at a time, one day at a time. And I don't know, Cyrus, I, I can't even begin to tell you that I just relaxed and just said, you know, I have to have faith that mm. I have a future. I don't know when it's going to happen. I have to keep my talent together. I, I always, you know, I still keep my voice together and uh, practice and everything just so I always be ready. I always tell young people, just be ready because you never know right. when that opportunity is going to come. You don't know when you're going to meet someone who can help you ask you to, whatever your talent is, sing on the spot, you know, play on the spot, whatever. You you just need to be ready, even though nothing's happening. And I tell you, right out of the box, just uh, about two weeks into January, then all of these things start happening. Now, the other thing I wanted to make sure, like, your listening audience knows that you see a lot of us entertainers around and we're doing things now and doing a lot of things, but we actually are having to live in a bubble. Those of us, like I'm a member of SAG Union, Actors Equity Union, we have to test every day. You know, if we're on a movie project, I just finished a, a movie that you didn't know about, Cyrus. And no. you finished the movie, and um, The Mass Singer is also SAG Union. So you have to test every day, and you have to be so careful not to bring, you know, something to a whole production because you can shut a production down. So it's been wonderful that we're back working again, but it's also been, you know, very, very stressful. So, but I'm very excited, very grateful to God, very grateful to these fans. It's like I've been rediscovered at, at age 61 years old, 
it seems like I have been giving a, a brand a brand new life. You know, I, I didn't mean not to take a breath there, but I was so excited <laughs> to let yeah. you get a word in. So, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Go on, Cyrus. No, 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 no. No, I, no. Look, believe me, I have been wanting this interview, Miss Holiday, for so long. You, I, I could just listen to you just. Talk. Honestly, no, no joke. My mom is so jealous that I get a chance to talk to you, and that she's not, she's not talking to you today. But I, I wanted to say something. You mentioned the fans, and I have to say something, Ms. Holiday, about your fans because they not only are loyal, uh, they, your fans are increasing. What has that been like for you to have this fan base continue to grow throughout your career? Well, that I think is because of of the internet and social media um which i'm just becoming of uh, just knowledge of of how to you know uh, what it's all about and getting involved yeah. and as i you know grow and uh uh during the pandemic even though i wasn't out a lot it seemed like a lot of people googled me and researched me and i have like all of these new younger fans so i don't yeah. know if they're just if they're kind of interested in theater or they're just kind of interested in some real singing, you know what I'm saying, in terms of right. of watching uh, an artist perform. And, I mean, I got I have fans as, as, as young as five years old, you know, maybe. I don't, even, I don't know if they're younger than that, but I know I've, they, people have been sending me little reels of, of their children at five years old. So it's, it's kind of great at first. I used did not want to be generational because when people would run into me, you know, when I was younger, they would go, "Oh, my mother, my mother loves you," you know. Then mm. uh, a couple of years ago, it was, "Oh, my grandmother loves you." It's like, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting pushed back for it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of generational, you know, because right. Dream Girls was actually forty years ago. So people Amazing. don't realize that. So, yeah. you know, so I have people who have been following me for 40 years, then trailing 30, 20, and now I have a whole brand new generation of uh, thanks to, you know, to the Internet and social media. Yeah. Well, that wow. is so true. We're, we're going to dive more into that. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to turn it over to my lovely co-host, Sherry Marie, today. Sherry, I'm going to turn Ms. Holiday over to you. Well, thank you, and she's in good hands. I have to tell you, Ms. Holiday, I am fangirling out over here. <laughs> so, thank you, Sherry. So bear thank with you. me. <laughs> thank you. Thank and, you. I'm sorry I mispronounced uh, your name uh, earlier, but, you know, but thank you so much. And you probably understand what I'm talking about. You also, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. a part of part of my same world, you know. So you, yeah. you probably know exactly what I've been feeling. Ex- exactly to the T. And yeah. I just wanted to also share with you, you mentioned being generational. My baby sister was having difficulty resting. We'd had a tragedy in the family, and your voice, mm. your music was the only thing that she would go to sleep for afterwards for an entire mm. year. For an mm. entire year. So you have, and for me, it was the song, I Am Love. For her, oh, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And for her, it was, and I am telling you, I am not going. We played it for a solid year until she fell asleep. And so thank you. Thank you for your gift because it has always been generational. And, you know, everything that you're receiving now is just who you are and so well-deserved. So thank you for Aww, that. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. It just seems like, you know, um, it, it, through that time, you know, um, uh, when I did Dream Girls, you know, and only a, a young lady at the time, 20 and 21. And then, you know, then there were many, many years where a lot of people didn't even, you know, look for me. You know, it just where yeah. I just had like a, a going through all of the music changes, you know, in terms of where mm-hmm. music changed. So R&B wasn't R&B anymore, you know. Right. People went straight ahead to rap or Hip hop, and then they forgot us. So this, to me, is the first years that I felt, or in last year too, that R and B could make a comeback. It's almost like yeah. people are longing for old school. People are mm-hmm. longing for those good R and B songs. You know that that just mm-hmm. have that mm-hmm. hook on it. You know, and so I don't know. It's just 
like I said, I don't want to get all spiritual and deep, but it's exciting, and I'm so so grateful because it has been a long time coming. You know, there was a time when I couldn't mm-hmm. even get arrested. I kept thinking, what could I do that I could get, <laughs> like, arrested for that wouldn't have, like, a big sense just so I could make some news? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> because only the bad people get a lot of publicity. You know what I'm saying? You got to really do something terrible. <laughs> To become to be on the news or get you know get publicity. So I was like, what could I do? What's the least thing I could do? <laughs> wow, I, I I hear you. I so understand what you're saying. And you know what? We're gonna get a little bit spiritual and a little bit deeper um, because I just want to be able to have an opportunity for the people to hear from you. What who and what? did it take for you to find your purpose? You mentioned you started in your 20s, so I know many of us are scrambling to try to figure out why we're here. So if you wouldn't mind sharing your experience with us on that. Well, um, actually, I started as a teenager. My show before Dream Girls was a show called Your Arms Too Short to Box of God. So I did that show from 18 to age 20, and then I started working on Dreamgirls at the same time, working both shows uh, at age 20 all the way uh, up through age 25. And, you know, and then, you know, I just kind of really took off, and uh, here was this, you know, this great, you know, Broadway sensation and all of this stuff. And then by the time I hit 30, my career was over. By the time I hit 30 years old, uh, my mm-hmm. career was over, and I had had a terrible downspin. You know, I just spiraled mm-hmm. uh, into a depression, and and I ha- I did not know my purpose without singing because I mm-hmm. that's the only thing I attached my worth to. So I was like, well, well, nobody's gonna love me if if I'm not singing. You know, so I can't mm-hmm. you know I can't get a job, I can't get a record deal. You know, what can I do? And so it wasn't really until these latter years. Because without really knowing, you know, what my career, what my future was going to hold, that I realized, well, no, I made a decision to choose Mm. life even though life was not going to be perfect. And then I also said to myself, well, I must have a purpose because I'm still here when I looked at all of my friends and, and, and counterparts who've gone mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. Whitney Houston, mm-hmm. Prince, Michael Jackson, all of, all of these people who are no longer here, and I'm here. So regardless wow. yeah. of whether I'm singing a song or I'm doing, you know, some kind of performance, the, the, the real reality is that I'm here, and I'm here mm-hmm. to, to give more... Uh, than than out of myself, you know what I'm saying. So I yeah. think that we have to to come to not having a list of what's going to make our life perfect, uh, or what you know, like a lot of us through the pandemic. I mean, I don't know. I was I was about to get ready to ask Walmart, could I come be a greeter? Because I was like, look, ah. <laughs> I need a job. What's going on? I know. You know, then Walmart cut back. I was like, wait a minute. I, said, I was about to come at y'all for a job. Y'all, y'all are shut down the hours. Oh Lord. So, oh, but, that's so good. You know, so, but what I'm saying is that you, we have to decide that life is life. It takes care of itself. So we also have to adjust daily, sometimes now yeah. we're learning, you know, hourly, uh, mm-hmm. refocus, put things in perspective, you know, uh, what if I didn't have my voice? What if what if everything happened and I didn't still have my voice? But even though, mm-hmm. you know, we weren't, I wasn't working, I wasn't doing it, I, you know, God still allowed me to have my instrument intact. So my thing was like, yeah. if I just keep my voice together, one day, they're going to be coming back. They're going to need a singer. Somebody's going to be needing some singers at some point. So Jennifer, yes, stay ready. Jennifer, stay ready. And that's what I just keep telling. Stay ready. If, even if you got to go work at Walmart, even if you got to go do just stay <laughs> ready. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we have to take a detour in life on our map, but we can get back on the road to where we were headed, you know? 
Yes. Oh, there's so many nuggets in there you just dropped on us. Thank you. That is a – it just blessed me. I know it's going to bless millions of people who are listening. Can you share your, your testimony? Because it's time for us to share the truth, I believe. And so thank you for that. And uh, my last question, because I know i got to get out of here. Um, as an artist, I just, I'm just i curious as an artist, all that you do and all that you are, what brings you the most joy? I would say as an as an artist I think that what brings me the most joy is having these young people um saying I want to sing a Jennifer Holiday song so that I can <laughs> win. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people always wow. ask yes. me, yeah, so a lot of people always ask me and they say, well, what, how do you feel about people singing your stuff on all of these reality shows and all these contests and things like that? And I said, it doesn't bother me. I said, because if they feel, first of all, you got to have a, a lot of something in you to think you can even sing a Jennifer Holiday song. I'm just sorry. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but, but fine. Let's like, say that again. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Say it again. I'm just saying, you know what I'm just saying? If, if, you, got, if you think you can do that, then you already have you're already a winner because the fact yeah. that you have you have to believe you have something to offer to the world to whatever uh, medium of talent you want to be in you want to be an actress singer whatever. you have to believe you got something to bring to the table yeah. and if you don't believe no one else is going to believe so yes some people get up there and they they don't sing it you know, as well. And then some people get up there and they really do a great job and they're able to advance to the next round, you know, or even Mm -hmm. maybe even when. But the fact that you have to believe that you're a winner before you get to the winning, you know, to the winning mark, you know, so before you, you know, you have to see the prize before you actually have it in your hand, you know. So I think that for people to say, oh, I want to sing, and I'm telling you, I want to sing, I am changing, you know, uh, for my audition song. Because like, mm-hmm. then that means you feel already that you, you've, you've got something. You know what I'm saying? And so to me to feel that I have inspired uh, generations that will not just this one, but the ones after I've long gone will mm-hmm. – you know, we'll take that. We'll take that with them. That is so powerful, Miss Holiday. I could talk to you until next February. I promise you <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you so much for the honor of just sitting at your feet. And Aww. thank you for serving the world. You you are serving the world with your gifts, and I thank you for that. I really, 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 really do. And uh, I got to get out of here, like I said, Brother Cyrus. I have to send her back over. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sherry. Appreciate that. Great question, too. And and Miss Holiday, I, I, I appreciate you being with us, and appreciate the time. We're not going to hold you too long. I wanted to go back to something that Sherry mentioned, though, and it reminded me of a post that you made on Instagram on July third, twenty twenty one. And I thought this was so interesting. It was a a, a beautiful photo of you with the word shine on the photo. And you wrote this in the caption, shine bright. No need to worry that someone will outshine you. It's not a competition. We all need to shine the brightest in our unique way. There can never be too much light in the world. So smile and let your light shine, shine, shine. I want to talk about that because there's so much of a lesson in that for all of us that there is enough. We've heard that before. There's there's enough for everyone. How has that helped you in your journey, Ms. Holiday, to remember that, that, that there is room for, for all? Well, the greatest example I can give you is when the movie of Dreamgirls came out. And then I had felt that my my whole life and my career had been replaced. And I felt that it was over for me. But it was Steve Harvey who and um and Tom Jana who reminded me and just said, Okay, first of all, there's plenty enough room for two Jennifers, there's plenty enough room for two great female vocal singers, 
Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's embrace both and let's let both shine. So that's where I kind of began to know that. And you know, there's I, you sound young, but there's an old sly uh, in the family uh, Stone song. Everybody is a star. Mm-hmm. Makes no difference who you are. Oh, you know, so so we have to remember remember that because even though we're performing and that gives us a lot of attention and and can bring us, you know, some money and and definitely some fame, but everyone else is a star at what what they do. You know what I'm saying? You can, you know, if you if you're the star um uh, uh Sky, uh, you know, sky person, or you're the star bellman at the hotel, you're the star reaches, you know what I'm saying? You have to have it in you um, and let it bring, let it come forth, you know, so yeah. it's it's not about occupation. Um, we are human beings, and, and even though, yes, we can be defined uh, by, you know, from society by what we do, of by you know class or whatever they want to do, but individually we have to continuously remind ourselves that that we are worthy. We are here for a reason, and we have a light shine. It, you know, as the old folks say, "This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine." You know what I'm saying? It's it's right. it's not me. I, what I what I said is nothing new. It's been it's been said you know for for years, maybe even hundreds of years, and we just have to keep saying it over and over, reminding ourselves and reminding others. Yeah. So I have to ask you a selfish uh, question then based on that. And it goes to something, actually a comment that was made on that post that I referenced from July. From July. Uh, I, and it is, it, it, it's funny because one of, the, the, uh, one of your fans that commented uh, say that you, you have what, what they call a generational uh, post. Um, have, you, have you thought about writing a book? Well, I had thought about I had thought about writing a book and um I'll just be honest with you, I kept saying that I don't have enough scandal to put in a book. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately today you need something that people can turn to, you know what I'm saying? I don't have that yeah. you know, I don't I was just like, right. you know, I didn't, I wasn't a drug addict. I wasn't, you know, it's kind of like you have to put something that people will say she also reveals. She also, and I don't have any secrets to reveal. You know, I don't have gotcha. any anything scandalous. But now that I feel that I could, I could just tell, you know, tell my testimony, you know, uh, and just. Speak from it, then someone can draw whatever whatever they need from it, you know. And um, as my music does that already, you know, it just kind of speaks for itself, it, you know, in terms of when I'm singing. It allows people to get whatever they need from it at that moment. If they feel like, you know, men tell me this, is sometimes, you know, if they feel like crying, they'll put on NM10 because that way everybody's crying and they don't have to say no. I've got, <laughs> nothing wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, no, it's just about they singing, you know. And right. so it's, it's just those kind of things. So I, I, I do think I do like to write a memoir, and I do feel that since um, a lot of these last, movies that have been coming out, you know, like on the cable um, networks or streaming Mm -hmm. networks and TV, a lot of those didn't have a lot of scandal and stuff. And I said, oh, okay, so maybe someone could help me to to find what part of, of my life that I could write about that um you know could be uh, uh of the greatest interest you know because i was thinking i was like okay i don't have no scandal that a publisher is going to say you know is she going to reveal a secret you know or i don't you know don't have anything to to reveal it's like that's what usually when somebody write a book they go she she tells the story about or he tells the story or something you know it's like i'm just so bored i was like i'm so bored i ain't got no scandals I ain't got no doubt. I was like, okay, well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I get it. I get it. And you know what? I, I can speak for myself and I think Sherry and, and the audience here to say that definitely we would love to love to be able just to embrace your story because I think it is so 
inspiring what you've been able to do you know on the stage you know and and be able to do just in life for sure last thing i want to ask you about miss holiday then we're going to let our audience know how to stay connected um you did release a single so in love that i mentioned at the beginning of, of the our conversation together the mass singer what has that been like for you you mentioned of course the impact of the pandemic well what has it been like for you to be back out there on that stage and to feel all that love coming back at you it's just been overwhelming, you know, I, and then, and at times I have to really, you know, just stop because I just, I feel like I'm going to cry because of tears of just, of of just, wow, you know, gratitude and, and thank you. And, and like I said, a long time coming in terms of just, just out here working and thinking that no one's paying attention or no one, you know, you know, sees what I what I've done or or any kind of contribution, you know, that that I've made to the music industry or anything. And just to have people uh respond the way they do, you know, and you know, it's just it's just been it's just been wonderful. And uh in July I have um a a movie a small part in an independent film where I just it's no singing in it, but it's an acting role, and it's it's very nice. And the movie's called The Road to Galena, and it's going to stream on um, uh, July eighth. And so that's been nice coming. And so it's just been I don't know, or just a whirlwind. And then the other thing I want to say this right quick because sometimes we we ask for something, you know, we ask for success, we ask for all it love, all of these things, and then when it comes to go, okay, wait a minute, something's going to happen to me, something wrong. And that's the first thing I was like, oh, my God, I'm having such I said, I'm just going to die. I said, well, at least they have a lot of stuff to say at my funeral. I was like, I'm must going to die. I did. I was like, oh, I must. I said, like, well, at least I'll go out. They're going to be like, child, she was doing it, you know, <laughs> when she go out wow. because I, I was, it was just been like that. It's just been so wonderful and beautiful that sometimes we get afraid of that it can't be real, you know, yeah. and we don't want to embrace it. But I've been trying to embrace each opportunity that's come my way because I have asked for this. I have prayed for this. I do feel that I deserve this. I do feel I still have so much more to give, so much more to offer as an artist and a human being. Well, Ms. Holiday, I can say for sure you do, and we we hear you, we see you, we love you, and we appreciate you. I know I appreciate you saying yes to this conversation for our audience. It means more than you know, and I know our audience definitely feels the same way. Again, everyone, the one and only Jennifer Holiday has been our guest. Ms. Holiday, let our audience know, where's the best place for them to stay connected with you? Well, the best place, because like I said, I'm getting new to all of this social media, so, so far, my Favorite place is Instagram, uh, okay. Jennifer Holiday Dream Girl. I'm learning how to work that. Uh, I've, I'm pretty much going uh, doing everything myself right now, so eventually I'm going to have to hire a social media person. But right now I do everything myself, so I see everything myself. So Instagram is my my main focus, Jennifer Holiday Dream Girl. But uh, I'm getting better with the, the Twitter, so I'm Lady J Holiday on Twitter and on mm-hmm. Facebook. I'm just Jennifer Holiday, um, my Facebook uh, page, and um, so you can you know find out what's going to do on. I'm going to try to start being better at posting, and um, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you know, so it's I'm growing, and I appreciate everyone you know patience as as I grow too. Yeah. Well, we look, we really appreciate you. And, Sherry, I appreciate you for co-hosting, holding it down with us today. Sherry, let our audience Thank know, if you, you don't Sherry. mind, how they can stay connected with you as well. You're, you're welcome, Jennifer Holiday. I'm still, I'm telling you, I'm banging out, honey. I'm trying to get it together. Thank you so much for the honor. <laughs> and, you know, for me, everything at Sherry Marie, C H E R I M A R E E, Miss Holiday, I just started following you on Instagram. I'm in. Thank you. So, yeah, if you just put that in, you guys, you can find me on all platforms. So I'm easy awesome. to find. Thank you, Brother Byron. Yeah, thank love you, you Sherry. Thank you so much. And, and, and Ms. Holiday, thank you again. Really appreciate you and looking forward to our next conversation together. 
Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Be blessed. You as well. Thank you. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>